Yo, what's up? And we back again with yet another episode of Kicking It With Art. And today we're gonna have a special guest on. She goes by the name Erica B. Airbrush Designs. Uh, she has very dope work. She's been doing this for a while now. So I hope you guys enjoy it today. So let's kick it. Man, you in the mothership, boy. You got that nice office. <laughs> oh, I Let just, me see. I hopefully had... you can see me. Say what now? I said, hopefully you can see me okay. Yeah, I can see you good. I'm on my computer. Okay. It, it looks big on my end, so I can see everything. I guess we'll just, oh, everybody from Alabama, right? Out of Alabama, based out of Alabama. Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham, yep. Alabama. We have a very talented airbrush artist, Erica B. Airbrush designer. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Art. Art, my art. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate you joining. All right, so let's just get right into it then with some questions, man. So, so first, okay. I just want to know how did you get into you know customizing or airbrushing, and how long have you been doing it? Well, my story is um, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Um, I used to work for a fast food restaurant like in 1992. And during this time, this was the era of uh, where hip hop and airbrushing was really, really popular. So if you go all the way back, you look at some of the videos with L. Cool J, mm -hmm. you see some videos with uh, Belle Bill DeVoe. You right. know, Belle Bill DeVoe, they wore airbrush all the time. Uh -huh. So that was inspiring for me. But it really took me seeing my coworker's um, friend coming to pick him up from work, and he had on some pants that were painted like from all the way down, the top all the way down. And he had Bart Simpson on there. He had playing cards, different things like that. And I said, hey, who needs your pants? And he was like, I did. And I was like, no. And, and I said, how did you do it? So he just said, I just went to Michael's. And Michael's was open back then. He said, I went to Michael's Arts and Craft, got me some um, fabric markers. And he said, hey, Erica, you can do it too. He said, don't you draw? Because even then, I was doing like a little doodling and sketching on stuff. And I was like, man, I said, well, I guess. He said, you should try it. Went to Michael's, got me a couple of markers. First design I did was a rose. This was all hand painted at the time. Yeah. So I wore my jeans to pick up my check. Everybody in the building was like, oh, Larry did your jeans. I said, no, Larry didn't do the jeans. I did them. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And I said, no, I'm serious. Oh, can you do mine? Can you do mine? So all of my coworkers started bringing me their jeans. I think I was charged like $25 to paint the jeans, you know, back then. And I would literally be up art to like four o'clock in the morning painting jeans. And then my other coworker said, Erica, you need to try airbrush. And I'm going, what's that? She said, you know, like at the beach when they do like this. Oh, okay. So I went to my local mall and went and stood and just watched and watched. And I finally was like, let me go and find an airbrush. Had no idea what I was doing, know how to use it. The manager at the particular Michaels in my area at the time said, hey, you sound like you're really serious about this. Come back on Tuesday and I'll give you my discount and let you get your first kit. So I got the airbrush. I'm self-taught. So had no idea what I was doing. Back then, there was no YouTube. <laughs> there was no, the only tutorials they had was VHS. This is how I'm telling y'all my age now. <laughs> so you had to put in the video player and watch it, but those were like $40. So I would go to the library and buy books on airbrushing and just try to emulate the best I could with what I saw. So the summer of 92, I started spraying my airbrush with water. I started spraying it with paint after that. And just continue to go on and on. Now, as far as customizing, um, I will say I'm not as you know new to it, but I'm still learning because becoming an airbrush artist is a totally different skill than becoming a sneaker customizer. All the paints that we use now, like Angelus, some of the other brands, there was nowhere to be found, you know, or bought by any of the airbrush artists. Even in this, as big as the industry is. Nobody in airbrushing was like hand painting sneakers. Everybody was airbrushing it. Right. But I actually enjoy, you know, doing the customization. So uh, meeting people like you and there's so many other customizers, I actually uh, enjoy your work, um, looking at what you do. And then it really was our uh, football cleats in my area that really had me to start doing the customization part. I've always had my company, Prophetic Airbrush Designs. But people start to ask me, hey, uh, where are the shoes? And I'm going, 
is everybody really doing shoes like that? And I said, you know what? Let me create another page on my Instagram called Erica B. Kicks. So if people just want to look at custom shoes and custom cliques, they can go there and look at those. So, you know, that's how the customization started. I mean, it's just, and I've been on a, sne- a couple of sneaker battles too. You know, even then. 2017. Uh, no, I haven't done one of those yet. <laughs> um, a couple of guys on Facebook actually came to me. Uh, there was another guy, um, Remain Stainless Customs, Facebook me a message and said, hey, Erica, I think it would be good for this um, this group I'm in. So he puts me in this group message and I'm reading it and I'm like, wait a minute, these guys are going to be battling about paint shoes. And I told him, I said, I don't think I need to be in it. He said, what? No, no. Yes, you do. He said, I'm not going to let you back out of this. And so it ends up being where I was like the only female in the group. And I remember they were talking. They was like, well, we need to find a female to go up against Eric. I said, why you got to do that? I said, no, put me up against the guy. <laughs> so I ended up being, uh, actually I was up against the guy out of Cali. California, and when it came down to the, uh, the initial battle, he did not perform. He didn't even have his shoes ready. So I was like, oh, man, they gave us two months. Two so months. He still wasn't ready? Still wasn't ready, man. Oh, he said he forgot. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, man. And the thing that was so cool was that the competition debuted on Thanksgiving Day. So I had, like, so many people that were, like, supporting it, like, hey, where are your shoes? And I'm going, I don't know, I'm waiting. And because he didn't show up. So I just did, my brother videoed me um, sitting at the kitchen table. Like we had already ate everything for Thanksgiving. And I, I just discussed. So this was uh, my version of the Tupac and Biggie um, customs. Mm-hmm. And uh, that has been probably the best selling, just unique custom that I featured even online, you know, today. So I bought, actually the pair that I did for the battle, I put them up for sale on my Etsy store. And I kid you, they sold to a guy in Germany. You would not believe his name. His name is Muhammad Ali. <laughs> so what's one yes. of the biggest challenges you faced? Since oh, gosh. <clears throat> what's one of the biggest challenges you think you faced? Biggest challenges um, as an artist? Yeah. Like or we'll, just in the... We'll, we'll say oh. like, with airbrushing or sneakers, whichever one. You know, or you have stories for both. Oh my gosh. So many. <laughs> um, ooh, I would, I would say, and, and my other artists, you know, saying that's, <clears throat> that's been working with me for a long time. Um, uh, you know, give him a shout out. Uh, Caleb Penn Jr. We actually did 126 feet square, 126 feet wall mural for a high school in another city. And the, there's a cool thing about this, though. I'm going to tell you it was a challenge, but I did not realize that when I went into the school that this school was actually built by my father. My father is a, um, a foreman. He works, uh, he's been in the mason, masonry industry for years in construction. Um, but And I remember seeing the plans for this school in his office at home when he would be, I would just, because I didn't realize, like, I said, well, Dad, what you working on? He's like, well, we're working on Bessemer City High School. And I was like, okay. <clears throat> then I didn't realize that two years later, I'm rolling up on the same school. And I said, oh my God, my dad built this school. And so when I walked down the hallway uh, with the art teacher and the principal, I'm looking at the entrance. I'm like, okay, it's gotta be one of these flat walls, right? So we went down he's like, no, it's, an, it's the alumni hall. And I was like, okay, oh, it's this wall. So you're used to paint on things that are kind of you know, flat, like even looking at your studio, you know, I could see some brickwork, but these bricks, they protruded out of the wall. So it was like these squares, like bricks that, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't even like the, the normal bricks that you see, like the red bricks. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this was. <laughs> so I'm rubbing my hand down the, down the uh, wall and I'm going, yeah, this is going to be a challenge. And then the thing too was that the space in between the windows and then the wall was not big at all. So we use different kind of formats. You know, sometimes we may do some things freehand, but not everything. And the biggest centerpiece of it all was going to be their logo, which was a tiger head. Right. <laughs> and so that right there, that was, and we had, how long, I think we had like two weeks to complete this project. Yeah, we want a very tight deadline. So I will say that was probably the biggest challenge. No. I've never done like a mural before, but I was thinking about trying what I what I was gonna do is just get a I got a um 
I got one of those four feet by eight feet like plywood boards out back. And I was thinking about mm -hmm. like sitting mm -hmm. and just trying to see like what I could do on a something <laughs> you know, that, that resembles like a wall, you know what I mean? Just to give it a go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I might give that a try. Yeah. Just to see how it goes. Yeah, you know, and that and that and that's one thing that's good, you know. Sometimes you 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 just don't know, you know, saying like because they're when I tell you people have asked me to do so many different things. One thing I used to be afraid of, even as an airbrush artist, was car tags. And I, since then, I've done, I'm sure, over 500 or more. Um, and, and I just couldn't believe I could do that. So, you know, being challenged to paint on different surfaces, you know, even with the airbrush, you know, that that is challenging. But, yeah, that wall, how long it was, and I think it was about 10 or 11 feet high <laughs> in the time frame. That's, I would say that was probably the biggest challenge. But at the same time, it was, it, it turned out great. You know, as long as the kids love it, because that's one reason why I do what I do, man. It's about the kids and people having a great feeling or experience of what you create for them. It, that's what it's all about. What does a typical day for Erica B look like? So you just wake up, like, what, what, what does a typical day look like when you get your day going? Well, uh, one, well, one, the first thing I do is I actually read, uh, I read a devotional. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Today's Promise, and it's, it's online. And it has a story, you know, that's written by this author. His name is Bill Bright. And he has a little story that he writes, but then he gives like an action point at the end of it. So you have an action point for the day, and then you have a couple of scriptures that you read. Mm -hmm. So I try my best to stick to whatever the action point is. And a lot of it is always being how can I be an inspiration to somebody else, you know, through my own life? You know, an example, um, how can I share, you know, the gospel with somebody else to encourage them? And so I have to make sure that I stay true to that myself because, you know, not being perfect here, not perfect, nobody else. Um, but that's, but, but when I come out that bedroom, boy, my mom, she, <laughs> my mom is, uh, cause I, I still with my folks and my mom, she's like ready to talk, you know? So we're talking, we're having breakfast and we're having coffee and, you know, so that's that's what I really enjoy. Um, my mom is an entrepreneur as well, um, so shout out to mom. You know, she yeah, she she's she's a, um, a awesome entrepreneur with uh, apparel, um, clothing. So you know, she's working. And so when I hit the door, if I gotta pick up supplies, I'm on errands. Mm -hmm. Hi, Blobby, Michaels. Um, the other store that I use um, near locally is called Alabama Art Supply. They are the only supplier in my city that carries Angela's if I got to do custom. So, yeah. That's so that, I mean, if I'm not running errands, huh? Go I ahead. I don't have a local store that carries Angela's, so I'm still just ordering. You say you don't? No, not locally. You, I, I, there's no way I can wow. do that. Wow. I, mean, I think Angela's is probably like the mm -hmm. Angela's store is like maybe an hour and 40 minutes from me or something like that. But uh, but there's no like no local store. I'm just gonna Man. Mm-hmm. And there, and this is like a, I would say a mom and pop um, store because they've been around for over 40 years. So when I, even when I started airbrushing, they were one of the first stores I used to shop uh, for a lot of my supplies too. Um, so, and it's like, I love it because it's like cheers. Like when you go in, it's like, you know, everybody knows your name in there because I've been shopping there for so long. You know, I know the staff, you know, the management, you know, everybody's so nice. And, uh, and they will ask me sometimes like, Hey, do you know what you think about this? And then when I told them that, I said, y'all need to start carrying Angela's. And it was like, what's that? And when I came in and I saw that display, I said, oh my God, y'all just don't know how happy I am about this. Mm -hmm. And so I notified all the other, yes, yes. And, and when it's stocked up, you know, it's like Christmas for us. <laughs> yep. Love this. Love that paint. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So at the time, yes. what are you uh, currently working on right now? So what, what do you got in the work going on? I don't know if you can, I was going to turn my, I had tried to sit up my table here so you can see, um, you know, say like what I'm working on. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So I've got a couple of, um, got a couple of Air Force Ones here I got to do. Um, there's some football cleats. Right. Got a pair of um, gloves here too. Yeah. And um, and I actually, oh, I got to give a shout out to a good friend of mine, um, Rebel Threads. Like she actually cut this sweatshirt for me. And I've got to design um, for a client out of uh, yeah out of the city. Yeah, man, Rebel, Rebel Threads is, is dope. Did they put the holes? The, Could you see that? The holes there too. I can see yeah, that. yeah, she did all that. She, oh, mm -hmm. put, she put the grommets in there and. That's dope. Yep. 
dope. Yep. So I gotta, I gotta, yeah. I, there are certain things that I, I'm good at, and, you know, it, but there are certain things I, I have to hire other people. <laughs> so what? So what's one of the worst experiences you've probably that you've had with clients? The worst. Um, being in this man, being in this business for 28 years. I mean, there there are some stories, but I think the one that that I would say was probably the worst was the one I had about two, two and a half years ago. Um, this, this was dealing with a client off my Etsy store and I had to paint some track spikes. And this is another phase about customizing that a lot of artists may not understand that once you transition from one surface of shoe, like you saw the Air Force Ones, which is a very popular sneaker that a lot of customizers use, that's an all leather sneaker, you know, and you're not, you know, it's not good to even try to paint the, the soles, but most of the time you're painting on leather because you're using, you know, Angela's other paint. But when it comes to doing football cleats and track spikes, it's a whole different kind of process. Your prep and your sanding, all of that is so vital. Um, had never done track spikes. So there, there were probably over 80 to 100 messages <laughs> between myself and this one client that was just over the top. Um, and we had a phone conversation, but the art that he wanted on the shoes, I learned that, hey, I kept trying to explain the shoe was so small, I can't fit this design into this area. So we was like, I ended up giving a bunch of money back. Once they got the uh, track spikes, they actually tried to give me more money. But I said, no, don't do it. I said, just... Let's just leave it at this, <laughs> you know, and then the spikes had to end up coming back to me again because I started to have some uh, paint pillage and I was like, okay, what I do wrong? And there was one guy that was so awesome. We used his product too, Liquid Kicks Official with uh, Jeff Chamberlain. Uh, shout out to Jeff too. Go put the bottle up. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. Got Got to get liquid kicks, any customizer, I'm telling you. But um, so that was talking to him. This guy took his lunch break to spend time to talk to me about the prices, but also dropped some nuggets on me too, you know, just as an artist and about business. So that that helped me. Man, Art, look, before I sent those track spikes back, I did the scratch test. I, I bit the um, track spikes down. I rolled them with my hand. I was like, bro, I'm about to step on them. <laughs> I was like, if, if, if paint pop off this, yeah, it's going to be them and not me. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was extremely stressful, man. I couldn't even sleep. I mean, it's, that's how much it was. Yeah, it was rough. It it's definitely like learning <laughs> something new. Like, it's always challenging when you go into doing something that you've never done before and then trying to figure out, trying to make it work. Because mm -hmm. I first, I think my first yes. service was like the phone posit shoe. Because you know, phone posits. You know, they just all smooth. Oh, smooth. man. You, know, you got to do some real work. <laughs> and the first yes, you do. Pair I painted, I hooked them up. I was like, yeah, I had them taped off across the bottom. I even did the, uh, I had used the, uh, what is it, Raleigh Restoration. So this was a while ago. I was using a oh, yeah. uh, scratch-resistant process. Mm -hmm. build up. So I got done. Right. I take the tape off, man, and the tape was adhered to the paint. <laughs> I was like, bro, I got Yo. <laughs> so, but I told myself like, I was never gonna paint foam positive again. But here I am again doing another pair. <laughs> that's the challenge too. That's what that's what kind of motivates you as a as a customizer. You know, what I'm saying like if you really got that drive and it and, and if especially if you've seen it done before, you know it can be done. It's just you know pushing yourself to um to learn a new process to you know. Um, complete a project, you know what I'm saying? So that's something that I feel like when you start to step outside the box, you know, as an artist, but there's some limits now. There's some place you just got to stay where you know what you're doing, you know? <laughs> so I understand about the phone pauses. I think I've done a, a couple pair of those too. Ain't it wrong? I see that cup too, bro. I need one of them. <laughs> What's that like? Um, is that SpongeBob on steroids or something? <laughs> SpongeBob when he had like the inflatable arms. Oh, he had, like, okay. Arms and he had pumped them up and this is how it looked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just like it. I like it. <laughs> it's cool. I like it. Thank you. So, um, what are some artists that you admire? Who are some artists that you? Admire? Man, well, I had a feeling you was gonna ask me that. I'm glad you asked me that. Um. Shoot, straight up, man. Dez Customs. Um, Dez is a versatile artist. 
He a beast. I mean, because he paints on everything. Everything. Yeah, that guy's amazing, man. I mean, because even watching him during the pandemic, you know, um, where we see that sports was delayed. And, you know, I, I follow him, too, because I love the way he paints on football cleats. But then to see how he was using his art to do murals, you know, in a lot of cities that, um, you know, where a lot of protesting was going on and some of the window, you know, so, some of the stores were boarded up. And just him being one of the creators to be able to go out and put positive messages on the boarded up stores, you know, that I, that was definitely inspirational for me. Mm -hmm. So, so Dez is one, Dez is one, but um, I will say, because I, I got, a, I got, you know, two different fields that I work in, mm -hmm. but on, on the airbrush side, man, I hope you follow this lady, the airbrush goddess. Yeah. Oh my God. Woo. Yeah, Jeez, man. Yes. Lord have mercy. Hey, I told her I, I got to fly up there and see you just to get some lessons on, you know, just how to get better at portraits. I mean, because, man, just <laughs> hands down, she's one of the best, you know, when it comes to uh, airbrushing portraits and stuff. The precision it takes the airbrush <laughs> to get those yes. in details to get those. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I use yes. airbrush, but it, it's nothing compared to how like, <laughs> real airbrush artists use. The right. It's just, and another guy I know, uh, Jay, I think his name is Jabo. Jabo Airbrush, and I don't know if you know him. I'll see you on his Instagram, but he does. I think I saw. I think I saw you post something. He does like <laughs> some of the tiniest details, like that I've ever seen on the air. Like I'll send it to you. Again. Mm -hmm. Get off. So, what's your proudest work to this day? So, you, it's a piece of work. Somebody be like, so what do you do? You know, it's always that one piece. You kind of be like, well, yeah, you know, this is what I do. So, what's that one piece? Oh man! If you just had to show somebody one thing, I got. I got. A I gotta pick one. <laughs> oh, geez, man, it's hard to talk. I will say this because I don't know what the other rapid question is, but I will I will save the other one just in case it come up. I would definitely say this year, uh, myself and another artist drove about forty five minutes uh, to paint a top of a vault in a cemetery, and this was for a mother in memory of her daughter uh, whose life was tragically taken. Um, by, you know, I would say irresponsible violence, you know, I mean, violence is never responsible, but just the way her life was in, had ended at, I think she was like 18 or 19 years old. And somebody recommended me to do this project. I had never painted on something like that before. There are no YouTube videos on how to paint a, a cemetery vault, you know, so it took us about two trips to go down and that, I, I would say there just seeing, being proud of the way it looked, more so fulfilling that assignment mm -hmm. and making that mother feel a little bit more peace, you know, about her daughter, you know, be, um, going on ahead of her. So that one right there, man. I mean, I had people calling me crying saying, Erica, that vault that you painted, you and um, Deron, they was like, oh my God, it just, you just don't know, I'm over here crying. That was so beautiful, you know, what you did for that mother. So I will say the um is post that? Mm -hmm. is that posted on your page? I did. Okay, I'm at the it's, it's on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. Is it on the uh it's on your your other your, your airbrush <clears throat> or your kick one? It's on PA Designs, okay. um, at PA Designs. Yeah, and uh, and I also have the YouTube, I can send you the YouTube video too. Yeah, I'll check it mm -hmm. out. All right, so let's get into okay. the rapid fire questions. <laughs> Rapid fire. Rapid fire question. <laughs> you just say the first thing. Okay. Out of your mind. It's not nothing crazy, but uh, you ready? Okay. All right, let's go. So, paint I'm ready. Airbrush. Airbrush. All right. I figured that. So, what's your favorite day of the week? <laughs> Sunday. Jordan one or Air Force? Sunday. Hmm. Air Force One. Favorite color to paint with? Blue. Apple or Android? <laughs> oh my God. I, Android, because I <laughs> enjoy all my life. I still ain't reaching over to Apple yet. <laughs> I come over to the dark side, man, the Apple side. <laughs> I know. I, I keep trying to do I can't do it yet, man. I don't know. <laughs> Marvel or DC? Oh, shoot, Marvel. 
Facts. Absolutely. The only my nephew got me on like that. <laughs> yeah, man. Batman was like my favorite. You know what I'm saying? Like a hero of all times. But it just mm-hmm. uh, Marvel, is, of course, the past eleven years with all their movies, they just kind of took over, man. Like, oh yeah. So yeah. Marvel yes. Movies, yes. So, <laughs> so movies mm-hmm. or TV shows. Movies. Yeah, right. movies. You got a favorite movie that you just can one of your go tos? Man, my all time favorite movie. Even if it come on TV, I will watch it through the commercials. Big with Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know why I love that movie. I've seen that movie. Yes, I love that movie. Again. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go watch that again. Yeah, Choice though, Tom Hanks. My all time favorite. <laughs> Classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so basketball or football? Depends on the season. I would I would say football. I'm a big college football fan. Okay, yeah. Roll tide, baby. I would say we're a team, but you're from Alabama, so I already know. I already know that is. Roll tide. Yes, hey, it's two old, it's two teams here, but yeah, I feel like it's only one when it comes down. Okay. That's what I'm at. I think a, a, a large group of people feel that way. I think a large mm-hmm. group of people feel that way. So, all right, last question, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Where do okay. you see your business going in the future? Oh, in the future? Well, we got plans. You know, we got plans to expand. Um, a lot of it will have something to do with my brand for Erica B. Mm-hmm. And it, it's going to be influential. I'll say that because we're still working on some plans. So um, definitely expand. And, and the market is what we're going to be doing. It is going to be influential. And we look forward to reaching out to a lot of new artists that are um, coming up, young people. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's always a lane for teaching new people. When I started Airbrush, nobody would really want to tell you anything. You know, my first mentor just, he passed away. He was from California too. He passed away about, it's been almost two months now. And um, I was so hurt. Like when I found out, you know, that he passed because he was the first person that really would just tell me a lot of the ins and outs about Airbrush. You know, so yeah, Ruben Fierro, he was he was one of the greats, awesome airbrush artists, but an awesome guy too. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate you for joining me. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and let everybody know your yes. Instagrams and your Facebooks and all that so they can go and uh, check you out. Okay. Yes, cool, cool. So yeah, follow me, check me out on my airbrush page, which is called at P A Designs, that's P as in Apple, A as in Paul Designs. And then if you want to check out my custom footwear. Check me out on Instagram at Erica B Kicks. It's just like my name. Uh, I don't know if you can see my shirt. <laughs> Erica B. Erica, see. Like Erica B Kicks. Yeah, spelled just like that. Um, on Facebook, there are two pages. There's the one for the airbrush. It's called Prophetic Airbrush Designs. Mm-hmm. And then there's also a secondary page uh, for me, Erica B Airbrush Designer. Yep, so that's how you can follow us. So cool. I appreciate you for joining me. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed it, man. I, I thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. I'm just trying to do something new and see how it works out. Let's see how it works out. You're doing great. Thank you. Yeah, you're doing great. I love it. I love it. I appreciate you <laughs> yep. for joining me, and I'll get up with you soon. All right. Have a good one. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you too. Bye. All right, cool. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I sure did. A lot of great stuff going on with Erica B. Uh, she's been a longtime supporter of myself and my work always showing love wherever uh, is needed and i appreciate her for that make sure you go and follow her on all her social media platform make sure you guys like this video subscribe make sure you guys follow me on instagram and follow me on twitter uh just for updates on everything that is art by art i appreciate you guys thank you i'll see you next time